Good morning, and welcome to today's launch of our spring semester welcome week activities. A special welcome to some of our new colleagues who are joining us today for their first welcome week. We have developed a collection of activities this morning to inspire us to tell our stories. Helping to set the stage for today's program is none other than our president, Dr. Chris Markwood. Well, good morning and welcome to the spring 2022 semester. And what a semester it's already starting to be. I wanna apologize up front for my voice. I'm recovering from bronchitis, uh, non-COVID bronchitis, uh, but we're gonna do our best to, to, to uh, present for you this morning. I wanna thank you all for your <clears throat> resiliency and adaptability as we flipped this welcome week to mostly virtual experiences as we strive to keep you and our students as healthy as possible while we ramp up to the start of the semester. Today, we wanna to focus on our story, our message, our impact. We opened with Jordan Van Hemert's story, and you'll be hearing more stories like his throughout the morning through these commercial breaks as we, and during our panels as we feature faculty, staff, and students. Storytelling is inherent almost genetic to the human experience. Before formal languages, we told stories with grunts and guttural sounds with our hands and through our body language. We recorded our stories on the walls of caves for others to view. We eventually added systems of symbols and then pictograms and then an alphabet and words to communicate. Paper and scrolls became more portable than stone tablets and metal plates and quills more user-friendly than chisels and knives to aid us in exchanging messages with others. <clears throat> Along the way, music, songs, dance, and art became more sophisticated ways for us to communicate, to pass down accounts of our past, and to tell our stories. Gutenberg's invention of the printing press in the 1400s was a much a staple of European Renaissance as the computer and the internet have been to modern communication. In between the two, the advent of the camera, the telegram, the telephone, the radio, television, film, and now the internet are just some of the advancements made to how we share our stories and information. Ironically, after more than 32,000 years, we return to an emphasis on visual storytelling. After all, what is Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, but a digital cave wall through which we record and share our visual story? Our social media timelines are full of vibrant pictures and videos of our families, our pets, what we ate for dinner last night, and the always classic vacation shot of our toes on the beach with an oceanic horizon in the background. Yes, that's Bridget and I. We posted that while at a conference in Florida. Over the millennia, <clears throat> the mechanisms may have changed, but our inherent desire to share our stories has not. And so we know stories are important to the fabric of humanity. They inform, they entertain, they inspire, and they articulate a shared experience. But what makes a good story? From English composition and literature courses to studies in journalism, creative writing and communication, we know we must include the who, our central characters who provide the voice of the story, the what, our central point and sometimes the story behind the story, the when, now, the future, the past, the where, <clears throat> the central place of the story, which often provides a visual backdrop for events taking place. And the how, the mechanics behind the story. Those are usually easy for us to wrap our minds around. For any university, who are usually our students, what is getting an education and later a job, when is both now and to benefit the futures, and where is obviously here. It's the why that has become the stumbling block especially <clears throat> since scrutiny continues to grow over the cost, relevance, and value of a college degree. Is this criticism new? No. <clears throat> I searched online for criticism of higher education 
And the second link was a 1934 article in the Journal of Higher Education by academic Walter Crosby Eels. His article very plainly entitled, Criticisms of Higher Education, very candidly summarized the critique of the day. As Eels put it, criticism of the American college seems to be one of the most here. popular. Granny wasn't there, and then that criticism charges dad. universities as aimless <laughs> institutions that have <laughs> prostituted themselves <laughs> to every public whim, led by <laughs> academic Machiavelli and pompous windbags. <laughs> Faculty <laughs> are called Campus. aloof, students so hard, instruction uninspired, <laughs> antiquated, <laughs> campus <laughs> life snobbish, <laughs> fundraisers predatory, <laughs> and athletics <laughs> answers. <laughs> Any of this sound familiar? Eels prefaces his compendium by stating much of this criticism has been cleverly, even brilliantly expressed, but the criticism is often superficial, illogical, and essentially unsound. Despite his assessment, more than eight decades later, the disapproval of higher education persists. It remains an incorrect narrative that we must learn how to correct. Today's higher ed challenges include the criticisms Eels summarizes, and more. Today's colleges and universities are called to be more than just centers of knowledge. We are catalysts for economic growth, discoverers of knowledge and invention, workforce innovators, champions for equity and inclusion, equalizers for individuals and communities we classify as marginalized or underserved, and partners in creating and improving communities quality of life. While expectations and accountability increase, so have the challenges. Declining enrollments, the approaching enrollment cliffs, shrinking budgets, increasing pressure for accountability, attracting and retaining talent, mounting student debt, and growing campus mental health concerns, as well as most recently, even responding to public health crises. Recent surveys show that even a majority of current students question the value of higher education. This is especially true when on average nationally, the cost of a college degree has risen by 25% over the last decade. While during that same time period, student debt has increased sevenfold when adjusted for inflation. Students leave college with sour tastes in their mouths, especially when institutional obstacles, real or perceived, turn a four-year degree into five or six. High-paying postgraduate jobs are scarce, and the salaries they are offered pale in comparison to student loan balances. While 87% of Georgians aged 25 and older currently hold a high school diploma, according to the US Census Bureau, only 31% of that same age bracket have at least a bachelor's degree. It's a troubling statistic since a survey by the American Association of Colleges and Universities in early 2021 indicated that only half of adults without a college degree or who earn less than $50,000 per year agree that college is worth the time and money. It's troubling considering a, the recent growth in undergraduate enrollment has been among low income and first generation sectors. That makes telling the story of higher education a challenging one when a majority of your audience does not subscribe to or value that narrative. We, as an institution and collectively as a sector, must react accordingly with a strong narrative about the value proposition of a college education. We must be intentional in telling the stories that articulate the specific promise we are making to our students, to their families, to taxpayers, community leaders about the quality of our products and services and how it will enable them to solve a problem in their lives. As much as we like to think that everybody should already know what we know, it really is up to us to explain the why behind the importance of a college education. Research by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities is quite revealing. College graduates are more likely to live healthier lives earn more money during their lifetime, and positively impact their families for generations to come. They are more likely to vote, to be engaged, and to better appreciate diverse environments. They are better positioned to move their families up the socio 
economic scale, to benefit their communities, economy, and to pay more in taxes. To those last points, the Washington Post reported last October <clears throat> that by May of 2021, Americans with college degrees fully recovered all pandemic job losses, while Americans without college degrees remained about 4.5 million jobs below pre-pandemic levels. A classic higher education debate also pits a degree versus vocation. Well, society needs a balance of the two, but the role of colleges and universities is more than just training the student for a job. In the past, they were commonly referred to as soft skills. New literature refers to them as power skills. And here at Columbus State, more than 90% of our graduating seniors consistently tell us that thanks to their college experience here, they have grown in creativity, critical thinking, leadership, professionalism, and work ethic, respect for diversity and inclusion, conflict resolution, and problem solving. These power skills are specifically the ones that employers are telling us that are in the greatest demand and are commonly lacking in today's workforce. The USG's annual lifetime earnings study revealed that for the class of 2020, the quality of a Columbus State degree increased their lifetime earning potential by nearly $1 million. Last year, US News and World Report recognized CSU for the impact that we have on social mobility, ranking us 46th among Southern regional public universities for our efforts. Social mobility refers to the extent to which college and universities educate more economically disadvantaged students, namely those students whose educations are largely funded through Pell Grants and who often represent those low income and first generation students I mentioned earlier. So we can make the case about a degree being important, but our story is deeper than a citation from a magazine. What is our story? The Columbus State University story. Each of you is a co-author of that story. Your unique backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives provide a part of our story that only you can tell. The common story that we all share is one of passion for our students, present, past, and future, to succeed in both their professional careers and in their personal lives. Our shared story includes our alumni, our community partners, and the employers that hire our graduates. This story includes the aha moments in the classroom, triumph and teamwork on our fields and courts of play, self-discovery through campus activities and organizations that help students build life and leadership skills, and so much more. Our arts and quality of life offerings that showcase our amazingly creative students, as well as contribute to economic development, workforce development, and tourism, that makes our community desirable, our proof, our story is worth telling. Our value proposition can be found in our creative to the core identity. Our identity is more than a creative logo or <clears throat> catchy slogan or motto. It is the essence of what we are. The collection of products, experiences, philosophy, services, and concepts that distinguish us from others. It is the sum of our distinctive characteristics like reputation, customer service, culture, communication, and visual elements that others' perceptions of those characteristics. Our value proposition. Our promise is that we challenge the seekers and the creators to see possibilities from fresh perspectives and make awe-inspiring collaborations that improve their lives and our world in dramatic ways. We take that a step further through our brand pillars. Cultivating creativity in which we strive to reach new levels of inspiration, <clears throat> discover unexpected connections, and emphasize experimenting exploring and questioning in the pursuit of knowledge. Inspiring collaborations through which town and gown work together to create a seamless community, a community, one that forges historic and growing partnerships and fosters the emerging creative economy. Reimagining education, how we endeavor to experiment in pedagogy and instruct, inspire and share the most advanced and effective learning methods in academia, an expanding world, by which we establish a diverse learning community on a global scale that will improve the standard of living for the world at large. If our pillars are the how, then our promise is the why. 
and it is really the heart of our story. You've heard me say it before, what we do matters. We change lives, we change families, we change communities. We know the power of education to help graduates achieve their career goals. We know the personal economic benefits of a lifetime of higher earnings. We know the benefit to society from having an engaged citizenry. But we need to do a better job at telling our story because we have an incredible story to tell. I attended the annual meeting of the American Association of State College and University, Universities this past fall, and <clears throat> this issue was at the heart of the meeting. The crisis we face across the country is a negative narrative that we must change. We can have an impact. And so we join a national effort today to begin sharpening our narrative as an institution to tell our story. Our university's story is more than just a history, <clears throat> a mission statement or a brand promise. As I said, it's a collection of all of our stories. Those emphasizing our students' academic co-curricular achievement, our alumni's success, your accomplishments in your professions, your disciplines and our campus endeavors and your own personal stories. Stories of impact and transformation, stories of courage and challenge, stories of success and aha moments, stories of failure and rebirth. Our individual stories form the collective CSU narrative, a narrative that we sorely need today. We all have a story to tell, maybe even more than one. One of the mentors who saw something in us that we didn't see. The teachers who knew when to push and when to show grace. The moment the light bulb went off and something became so clear, it changed our life. I'll never forget that moment for me. Picture it, undergraduate graduation in 1987. Man, that seems like a long time ago. My advisor, whom <clears throat> I'd served as an undergraduate TA for for two years, came to me and said, Chris, my summer instructor for American government canceled. If I give you my notes and handouts, would you teach the class? And I thought to myself, <clears throat> well, I'm headed to law school in a few months and really could use the extra cash. I've heard those lectures many times over the last several years, so why not? So I gathered his notes and his handouts and his textbook and met with him a few times to talk strategy and did my best to prep for the class that began in two weeks. Well, it was the worst class I ever taught. No graduate education, someone else's notes, and to make things worse, I knew many of the folks in that class. They were friends of mine. So I completed the class under his tutelage and <clears throat> moved to Columbia, Missouri and started law school. But as I briefed those law cases, <clears throat> law cases and participated in the Socratic method, couldn't get that class I taught out of my head. Long story short, after a couple of weeks, I went over to political science and asked if it was too late to enroll in the master's program. That moment, that poorly taught class changed my life. Somebody saw something in me, invested in me and gave me a chance. Many of us have those types of personal stories as well. Higher education changes lives. So join me in helping to change the narrative as, well, as we tell Columbus State University's story and the story of the power of education because we change lives, we change families, we change communities. Our story, therefore, needs to focus on the why so that we can clearly communicate our value proposition and quiet our critics. For example, consider some of the what's of the fall semester. News of new degree programs tell the stories of how we are fulfilling our mission to empower students and graduates to be creative problem solvers and future leaders in the communities and professions where they will live and lead. They underscore how Columbus State is responding to the needs, demands, and challenges of our local, national, and global workforce. There is as much criticism of higher education ranking programs as there is the colleges and universities they rank. 
So why publicize that CSU remains a top ranked regional university? Our reputation is important and rankings are a part of our narrative. We know that they are not the best set of benchmarks against which to measure the rigor and quality of university academics, but they are important metrics for our students and for our public. More so than the rankings, the whys behind our continued rankings is truly the true story. We established a new Dean position of research and graduate studies. Why is this important? We know the approaching undergraduate enrollment cliff is going to put a greater emphasis on graduate program recruiting. This and the importance of increased grant funding to support academics and our scholarly research alike makes our focus on undergirding the infrastructure supporting graduate student and graduate faculty recruitment and retention an imperative. Along those same lines, telling stories about awards and grants you receive and professional association roles you hold is also vital. More important than the what, those stories communicate to our audiences the breadth and depth of subject matter expertise, the scholarly research, and the knowledge base present here at Columbus State. Likewise, sharing news of our alumni's achievements demonstrates to others, especially potential employers, the quality and the high regard held for a CSU degree. When we laud our donors for their philanthropic support of CSU, it signals to other alumni, community supporters, and governmental partners that others see our university and our students as a worthwhile investment. Our institutional spending had a $272 million economic impact in fiscal year 2020. Why is this relevant? Our influence on economic development, workforce development, cultural and destination tourism, and other quality of life elements are part of our community profile. When we highlight the ways in which CSU is being a good community citizen, it helps strengthen our civic inroads, our partnerships, and overall reputation. Even the news of extending our operating hours on Tuesday evenings tells the story of our desire to be more accessible to our students and community, as we mentioned earlier. As you can see, Columbus State has a rich story to tell. We all comprise that story, which means there is a role for all of us to play. Our remaining program today and activities throughout the rest of the week will center around this theme. Michael will return to tell you more right after this commercial break.